Hi, this is Sandra, and in this video, I want to show you some of the more common controls to go on a graphical user interface in NetBeans, such as a button, a label, using a message dialog, and a text field. I'm going to start off with a new project, Java with Maven, Java application, and next, and project name, button, label, text field, just so that I know what's in it. You can, you can change the bottom half here, that's more for Ma Maven, but it's not going to matter there. Group ID, com.sandra. The package that it's in, um, again, it picks the name of the project, com.sandra. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter there for what we're doing at the minute. Under source packages there, you can right click on that. I'm going to put in a new JFrame form. So that allows me, that gives me the frame which I can place controls onto. So I'm just going to call it my frame. Now to start off for the palette you'll have on the right hand side, I'm going to drag on a button from there. Now the most common controls that you would want are common, sorry, variables that you'd want to change there. Common attributes, variables or properties, same thing. Um, change variable name, so I'm going to call this there BTN. So a three letter prefix for all the buttons I'm going to use will be BTN. So BTN hello it's going to have that hello world and put that into a message dialog and right click again edit text hello world now when i double click on a button it's going to bring me to the most common event associated with the control in this case a button it'll be the click event so buttons really are for clicking on so i can double click on that it'll bring me straight into the code or i could right click event action and action performed in this case it's just as easy to double click on it that will bring you to a method that's already um, generated in the code uh, behind it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a message dialog so that is in a class called j option pane so what i'm typing in here is jop i've had to hit control space there twice so j option pane when i see it I'm just going to hit dot and that will complete it and bring pull in the dot for me as well. So dot show message dialog. So you might need control space again when you're typing that to pop up that autocomplete list. Show message dialog. So show M will be enough there. Now there are a few of these different methods that's known as method overloading. The more basic one there is the component, the parent component which is this frame, so I'd actually put in the keyword this to say that it belongs to this frame, the one that, I, that I'm writing at the minute. It just means the message dialog will appear in the middle of this frame. And then an object, which can be a string. So it can be an object or anything that is a subclass of object, which is any class. It can be a string for my message. The second one there, if I were to choose that, You've got, again, the parent component, this frame, the message, which would be my string, the title that appears in the, um, the little bar at the top of the message. And then finally, the message type. You see the help here? It will give you, um, this is basically opening up the API. So I can see here the message type, whether it's going to be an error message or an information message and so on that will give you an icon on it. So I'm going to use that one just to show you. So the parent component, that's this. The second one is the message that I want to display. So double quotes, hello world, uh, tab across there, the title, so that appears in the bar at the top. Uh, I'll just put hello in there. And the fourth one there is the message type. Now it's it's giving me an int. So I'm going, well, what is int is it? I could put in one or two, but that's not what you should do. So this is from the class J option pane. There are message types in that class. Uh, they're in as constants, which means they're in capital letters. They're static final variables. What I'm going to do here is type in J option pane dot. And I know that it's going to be something message, error message, information message, plain message, question message. So I'm just going to go with oh, plain message is no icon. So for this one, I'm going to choose information message just so you can see the icon that appears. Now, that red line going down there, that's a page break for if you're printing out. So you can split up, make sure you split up here in the middle, uh, just after the comma there. Now, and don't forget, semicolon, that's at the end. Just to test this out, is it the run button? 
Now it's asking me for the main class. So any JFrame that you create in NetBeans will come already with a built-in main and it has its it opening up in its own thread. But the code that it has there is create a new instance of my frame, create a new instance of this class. Frames are invisible by default. So it has a call on that to set visible and it passes in true so that you'll actually see the frame when it runs. So you can select the main class and that might take a minute there to open up. Now there is the frame and when I press that hello world button, that's the message box that I created. That's my message type, my information message, my text on it and the, the title there and it comes by default with an OK button. So that is uh, the, that's your, your message dialogue in Java. Now to add on to this, back to my design button here at the top, we'll bring you back in. So what I want to do, I'm just going to add two numbers together and display the result in a label. So for that, I need two text fields. So one, two. And now labels are for like headings or you can use a label to display text in. So I'm going to do kind of both here. Now, firstly, my text field, I'm going to right click change variable name. So the prefix for that text number one. OK, I'm going to empty the text out of that. So edit text and just backspace to delete it out. The label in the middle edit text is going to be just a plus. Now, I'm not going to use that label in code, so I don't need to right click on it and change variable name. I do for the text field here, so it's going to be txt number two. And again, empty the text out there, right click at the text and backspace. And the label at the end is where I'm going to display the result in. So change variable name, lbl result. OK, and I'm going to empty the text out of there, or better still, so I don't have an invisible label there, result goes here. Yeah, so you can play around with that. OK, so what I need to add on here is a button so that when I press the button, it will display the result for me. So I can put move that over there, pop in a button. Can right click, change variable name, BTL, calculate. OK, and right click, edit text, calculate. So everything's going to happen when I press on that button. Now my label here is shrunk a little bit, so just make it a little bit bigger. So everything is going to happen when I hit the calculate button. So that's where all my code is going to go. I'm going to take the value from the first text field. So again, I'm just looking over here, number one. I'm going to take the value from the second text field, and that's text number two, and put the result in the label. Now, first I'm going to show you how not to do it. So double click on the calculate button. That will bring me to the event in behind the, the button, so the code for that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the label first, label result. To put text into a label, it's, you call the set text method and you pass in a string. I'm going to get the strings from both text fields and add them together. So it's going to be text number one, I just typed in txt in control space, text number one dot get text plus text number two dot get text. Text number two dot get text. So it gets the text from one, adds it onto the text from the other and passes that into the set text method of the label. Now, have you spotted what's going to happen here? So whatever I put in here, 10 plus 12, calculate 1012. So it's concatenated them together. So in Java or in, in on a GUI, when you take text from a text field, it comes in as a string and the same as a string. In Java, when there's a string on the left hand side of the plus, that plus acts as string concatenation. So it's going to concatenate the two strings together. So what I need to do is turn that text into a number and then add it on to that text also turned into a number. I'm just going to close down that GUI. So I'm going to do that in, in different lines. Now I'm going to allow the user to take in a double. So I'll call this double num1 equals. So how do I convert the text 
from that text field into a double. There's a class in the API called double. Um, there's, there's one, they're called wrapper classes. There's a double class for the double primitive. There's an integer class for the int primitive, a character class for the car primitive and so on. They're just useful methods in here for converting between types, especially from strings to uh, primitive types and back again. So there is a parse double method and it takes in a string and the string is going to be the text field dot get text. So that takes the text from the text field, that's a string, parse, converts it that string into a double and stores it in num1. So just repeat that for the um, second number that I want. Double num2. Copying and pasting doesn't always work. You might forget to change something, but I'm chancing it here. And now my set text, I'm going to pop in here num1 plus num2. Now, a couple of things here. When you add, when that addition operator sees a number on the left, it will act as addition as opposed to string concatenation. However, the set text method wants a string and that's not a string. They are indeed, that is indeed a number. I'm going to show you the proper way to convert a number into a string and a quick cheeky way to convert a number into a string. Quick cheeky way first. Uh, double quotes plus now, what I'm going to do here is just pop round brackets around num1 plus, plus num2 so that happens first. When the plus operator sees a string on the left, it's going to act as string concatenation. But the brackets will get done first. So it'll add 10 to 12 if, I, if that's what I input. That'll give 22. We'll add that onto a string. That will work. I'm going to run that just to show you that that works. And then I'm going to show you the way that it should be done just to make your code a little bit easier to read. So if I pop in 10 here and 12 here and click the button, we have 22.0 because I declared it as a double. And then, so that will work fine. And then the way that it's meant to be done, so label result dot set text. So I was explaining there, the double class has useful methods for converting between numbers and strings. So in there, so double dot, there's a static method which means I don't need to instantiate the class. I can just say double dot, double dot parse is static and double dot two string is static. So the two string takes in a double and converts it into a string. And here I don't have the result stored in a variable. So I'll need to write in num1 plus num2. And that is the correct way. Add the numbers together, pass it in the, into the two string method of the double class. And then that passes it into the set text of the label. And that will work there fine as well. Just to run that and test that. Again, we'll put in 22 and 44 and calculate, and that's 66.0. Okay. And that was just the, the more common controls there for GUIs in Java in NetBeans. Um, if you want to take a look at my next video, what I'll do is I'll discuss um, how to avoid errors when the user types in a string and you expect a number from them. So I'll deal with that for parsing. So correctly parsing and dealing with any exceptions there. I'll discuss that in the next video. Thank you.